Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to continue talking about nested masks, using the same character we did in the previous video. So hopefully by now you are no longer afraid of masks. You can see why they're useful. Well, what if I wanted to add a little bit of camouflage on top of this character? So here inside the primary mask, I've just put a image I found on Google Image Search. But I'm going to make it set to multiply so it integrates better with the character. But what if I said, you know what, I don't want this camouflage to be where that blue paint is. I want the camouflage everywhere but where this blue paint is. Okay, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to control click on the layer thumbnail for the blue paint. And what that does is just makes a selection where any of the blue paint is. And then I'm going to say select inverse. So that is, now there's a selection wherever the blue paint is not. This is the opposite of that selection. Well, now I'm going to make my camo layer visible. And with this selection made, I'm going to click the Add Layer Mask button. So now you can see the thumbnail of my camouflage layer has both white and black. It's not an empty mask. It is a mask that I generated from that selection. So I'm going to hide the blue paint layer to show you what I mean. You can see here that my camouflage layer is missing in all those places where the blue paint is. So I'm going to turn that blue paint back on. So now I have blue paint and I have camouflage where there's no blue paint. Now what if I want to have the camouflage have a fade? I want there to be more camouflage at the bottom of the model and less up by the head. I could do it two ways. One way would be just to modify this existing mask, the one that I've already started. The other way would be to add in an additional mask. Now stick with me here because this might seem complicated, but it's going to be the best way to work. So I'm going to make a new layer group, the little folder, and I'm going to move my camouflage layer into that group. In fact, it's going to be the only layer in this group. And now the reason I did this is because a group can have its own mask. So I'm going to add a new blank mask to this group, and then I'm going to paint that fade in. So using black in the mask, I can hide away any of that camouflage. And then with white, I can bring it back. So what we have here is a very complicated mask. It is both not where the original blue paint was, and we got that with the inverse selection, but it also has a fade from top to bottom. Now this sort of a mask could be really challenging to make as a single mask. And that's where nesting these two different masks is really useful. Because what I can do is I can modify either part of it individually. Like for instance, maybe I decide, actually I don't want the fade at all at the bottom, I only want it at the top. So then I would just modify this top mask. This is a different look entirely. But when I did that, I did not change the fact that there's still no camouflage where that initial blue paint was. And that's because this initial mask we made with the inverse selection has stayed put. Since this is one of those concepts that really has to be tried before you can get it, I've included this image at the bottom of the post. So go ahead and open up my PSD folder, see what I've done here, and give it a try yourself. Add overlays, nest some masks, and see what this really feels like. Now you might be thinking, whoa, this is just too much for me. Don't really want to do this. Why can't I just paint? Well, what I'd say to that is that this is more complicated than simply putting paint down on your canvas. But this is what Photoshop really adds into the process. If you wanted a traditional paint, that's sort of its own thing. But once you're working digitally, you have certain advantages that'll make you more efficient and able to take more experimental risks. Something like this is going to help you try out 10 different paint jobs on a character in the time it would have taken you to do one or two if you were painting them from scratch. Because this separates the individual components and gives you a lot more flexibility. So it might be hard to learn at first, but believe me that it is going to help you in the long term. So good luck, and thanks for coming to ControlPaint.com.